Good morning, my name is Michael Frazier. Oh, my name is Benjamin Kabugi. <laughs> my name is Saquon Pettis. My name is Sheree Paris. My name is Shaheem Sabor. My name is uh, Shamir Miller. My name is Elohim Ali. My name is Maurice Myers. Hello, my name is Damani Johnson. Yes. 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 Yes, I'm black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The answer to your question is yes, I have been racially profiled by the police. My neighborhood is a heavy violence break, and they assume that basically 100% of the crimes are committed by African American males. So I've been randomly stopped, randomly car searched, randomly searched on the spot. Even though I know my rights, the cops make me feel like if you don't conspire with them, that they will arrest you on the spot. So to, even though I know I have nothing to do with it, I just go along with it. But yes, I have a rich profile. I was driving. It was me and my friend around like, it was late at night, like 11.30. And um, he said we ran a red light, but I definitely turned when the light was green, but he went through a bunch of trying to harass, trying to search my car. But I wouldn't let him allow him to search my car. He was trying to, you know, use the, I would say, I'd say bully me into like, you know, trying to start something that wasn't really there. But at the end, I was able to stay calm and like, just use my words. And, get around there. When I was um, probably 16, I was coming, I was going to a basketball game with like a bunch of my friends and all that. And my cousin, I let him use my um, school Metro card. And as soon as he used it, we both got pulled, well, I got pulled over with like two other people, like in the train station. And they were like, oh, we taking y'all because y'all both used one swipe and all this other crap that was a bunch of nonsense. And when it was like, they put me in cuffs and then they took me out the cuffs and the guy literally told me he was like, he was trying to show off for his boss. Mm -hmm. Now, as a 16 year old, I didn't think that was anything to really think about, but as a 21 year old man, I'm thinking about it today. Like, yeah, like that had, cause it was mad. It was like probably two, Caucasian dudes before me who hopped the fence and I and I got stopped for something that never I never did so yeah. about a year or two ago um it was a uh, late night probably around one in the morning a couple of friends and I we were outside just relaxing chilling no politicking right. on the block and then a few police officers they pulled up on us you know they checked us you know they searched us they called for backup. Wow, pulled no up, reason. Pulled up. We didn't do anything at right. all. I just came from the store. had Arizona in my bag. I was about to go in the house. Um, they called for backup. About two or three paddy wagons came up. We were all in the paddy wagons. And then from there, we went to Central Bookings. I spent the entire weekend in Central Bookings for nothing at all. Wow. Nothing at all. Wow. You know, so like it's things like that. And I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. That's in Brooklyn, New York, huh? So, like, things like that, like, you know, it's real prevalent in my neighborhood. And it shouldn't be that way, you know? And I just, and I I'm, I mean, it probably could have happened because at that time, there were a lot of things going on in terms of uh, gang wars and beefs. But even still, that shouldn't have happened at all because we didn't do anything at all. We didn't have any weapons. We weren't uh, soliciting anything. So there shouldn't be any reason why we had to spend the entire week in a sense of Brooklyn. So that's kind of long. Wow. I was asked to step out the car. It was a minor situation where, you know, I skipped the red light, but I still was asked to step out the car. So, yes, I have been originally for a Okay, thank you. And I had my hands in my pocket because it was cool, whatever. And he automatically thought I had a weapon on me. He like, get your hands out of your pants. And, and cop stuff. how did you feel about that? I mean, honestly, I already have a... A anger towards cops, mm -hmm. so like when that happened, it just put that on the top of it. Not every day, but there's always one a sprinkle of it in my lifetime. Like you know, when I'm walking under the subway, this we have subways in Philadelphia where um, there's like a white lady. She feel intimidated by me, basically because of, I, I feel like it's kind of the color of my skin. She never actually hear me spoke, speak or anything like that. It's not because of the way I dress, because I can be wearing uh, a, a, a tie or or. Um, or dressy a, a, apparel or anything, and I still get, I still feel racially profiled. I live in a very racial neighborhood, 
We're constantly racially profiled all the time in stores, walking down the street, on this campus, you know, even though it's an HBCU, well, yeah. Nah, not at all. Hmm. Never. <laughs> no. Do I feel safe? No. Like, I feel like they just go about their job and do what they gotta do. But do I feel safe when a cop right next to me? No. And why is that? Because it's already an anger built. Like, it's just like, I don't feel like cops really do what they supposed to do, honestly. And they always got some, like, asshole thing, like, about them. Like, it's just, like, always, like, a, a rude mentality they already have against black men, I guess. Okay, thank you. I don't believe that law enforcement is here for me. I think law enforcement is here for me, like to come get me. They're never here to help me. Even if you call them when they time they get there, nobody really cares about what you're talking about half the time. They're just looking at you like you just another nigga in this situation, in a bad situation, and you need us to help you. When all they really want to do is lock you up. So, particularly, yeah. I feel safe on. I feel, I feel safe because I know I don't do anything wrong. But I feel like it, it takes more than that for, um, for police officers to stop you. It don't matter if you do anything wrong or not, they still will stop you. Thank you. Um, to a certain extent, it depends on where I am and what I have on. The way I'm dressed right now, I have on a full suit and tie. So if a police officer was to see me now, they would think nothing of me. They would probably speak to me in a respectful manner. But if I was to have on sweats and a hoodie, I probably would get a certain look or a certain response from law enforcement. So it all depends where I am and what I have on. But um, as a whole, I do feel safe because I carry myself in a way that would provoke the police to, you know, interfere with what I'm doing or bother me. So, you know, I do feel comfortable around police officers. Okay. Thank you. Black men. Yeah, definitely. I think they see us as a threat, and they try to enforce their uh, use their power for their advantage instead of for the right thing. America, no. No, I don't think it's purposeful. I think they got to meet quotas. I believe that it's not it's not the actual um, police officer specifically. I think it's the police system that um that targets black people because they want to meet quotas. They want to they want to decriminalize the black man or criminalize the black man. Um, no, not at all. I mean, it's, it's a big reason. Uh, Cops are here to protect and serve, but you know, we are African American, they're here to harass and disturb. And a lot of African American people don't feel comfortable with cops, including myself, because of um, you know, the racial history behind you know, officers. Most people don't know, back in the South, officers used to be more than just people. They used to be clansmen, they would use um, the hounds and release them on people and stuff like that. And, uh, Basically, it's just a, a whole lot of things that goes behind of officers, you know, trying to protect and police uh, predominantly African American neighborhoods. Um, for instance, uh, with the Mike Brown case in Ferguson, 67% uh, African Americans are in that neighborhood, but most of the Ferguson Police Department is Caucasian. So when you put two different uh, racial backgrounds together and expect them to understand one another, you're not really going to get anywhere. And I think the issue with uh, police officers is that they don't fit the demographics of usually the community. Usually it's an all white district or precinct dealing with an all black neighborhood. It should be the other way around. Basically, it should be African Americans, you know, precinct dealing with African American problems because it leaves no room for error. Um, Personally, I just think law enforcement in the United States of America is, you know, not what it should be. You know, the judicial system is very corrupt. It's, it's uh, they like to say it's colorblind, but I don't think it's colorblind. They see color and they play that to, you know, their advantage. But, you know, I, I really don't feel safe around law enforcement. You know, even though I haven't really been in a situation with law enforcement like that. But it's just as long as African American people and you know, minorities don't feel safe around law enforcement. I won't feel safe. So. Okay, thank you.